right, guys, what is going on? How y'all doing tonight? This is the Club of the Man 1993, and we are here one more time tonight, and one last time, as this video will be, for now, of course, unless I had to spend the night here for something, the final video that I do right here in my bedroom. As I said back in my live uh, Rumble preview and predictions, uh, tomorrow, before the Rumble pay-per-view, I will be um, moving some big stuff into my brand new home that I just closed on last week. And for now on, you'll be seeing me live from a different home. Although, with me having my own place and a little more space, I am going to try, may not be right away, because I'm not going to be moving all the big stuff this weekend. I'm going to try to bring back the green screen. And maybe, you know, change the background. And not have, like, you know, like a room in the background. Like, do what I used to do um, with the um, with the with um, the backdrop and whatnot. So, hopefully, that'll be coming um, once I get settled into the new place. But, um... I am tired, and I have a long day tomorrow, so I'm going to make this one quick. But we're going to review this week's episode of SmackDown, which, again, was from tonight, the January 7th, 2023 edition. It took place in Laredo, Texas. It is the go-home edition of SmackDown for um, Royal Rumble. And overall, this show was solid. It had its, you know, its swings and misses. A few things that I wasn't the biggest fan of. But also had some stuff that was intriguing. My favorite part of the show, though, by far, well, match-wise, it was definitely um, the um, the tag match with Imperium and Legato del Fantasma. Again, I've always been a big fan of Imperium, but Legato del Fantasma, especially, you know, I mean, I've always been a fan of Santos Escobar. But Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro are improving a lot. And I am more so taking them all as a unit more seriously than I did when they were in NXT. But there was a few things, though, on the show that I was like, eh, about. That I will, of course, talk about when we get to it. So not everything on the show was good. I'll, I'll say it was solid. It was solid. Because uh, the things that needed to be done right were done right. Well, you know, like the, the more important things for the show. But my but my favorite, you know, segment though was still definitely what they did with L.A. Knight tonight. Oh God, he, that, was, that that cracked me up. So the show opened up giving us a recap of the trial of Sami Zayn from this past week's episode of Raw. And, of course, the fact how Roman doesn't want to see or speak to Sammy um, until Saturday. Now, of course, does that mean Sammy's not allowed to show up here on SmackDown? Because Roman Reigns was not on the show either. They were showing later in the show that he was actually on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. So, does that mean Sammy's not allowed to come to SmackDown? Well, we kind of, you know... um, it kind of, I guess he wasn't allowed to because the show opened up with um, with an SUV pulling up and out came the Usos and Sol Sokoa, who was going to be having a match against Kevin Owens in the main event of the show. So as they they come out, um, Sami Zayn sneaks around the corner with a hood up to talk to Jay Uso. But Jay warns him about violating an order from the tribal chief. And Sammy tells him he just wanted to make sure he knows his defense at the trial means the world. And if Jay ever needs anything, never hesitate to ask. And he's like, yeah, no problem, man. So Sam puts his hood. He exits. The opening match was Karrion Cross versus Rey Mysterio. The match was not too bad. Um... Rey Mysterio, though, does eventually win. Well, well, Cross did kick out of a 6-1-9 and the diving splash combo. Uh, but Cross though, went with a locomotion Northern Lights suplex. But then Rey reversed it and pinned Karrion Cross with a crucifix pin. 
don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't the worst way to have Cross suffer his first pinfall loss since he returned. I don't know. I kind of didn't want to see that happen, though. You know, I I don't know. I I I'm not saying I'm disappointed with Carry and Cross, but they seem to still hold back on him right now. Because like when he first came back and he immediately, immediately teased that match with Roman Reigns, I'm just like, holy smokes, let's go. And when they've given him promo time, he is masterful at the art he's doing. But they kind of slowed up on him. And I was enjoying this build, but seeing Ray get the roll-up victory, I'm like, okay, so that was strange. Good match, but strange how they, with with that fish. Oh, we also had a, we also had several, um, like, digital exclusive videos of people announcing their entrance into the Rumble. Mostly the women. Um, we had Damage Control announcing how all three will be in the Rumble, and because of that, nobody will be able to win. So all three are in. Becky Lynch still has not announced her entry into the Rumble yet, but I'm pretty sure she'll be a surprise. Austin Theory also showed up on SmackDown. He gets in the ring and for the second time in a few weeks goes, The champ is here! Is that still teasing the match that they might do at WrestleMania? Austin Theory and John Cena for the US title? Oh god, I hope they do it. That match will be so great. So he gets in the ring, he gloats about retaining the U.S. title on Raw, and now he's going to go with the Rumble. Then come in the NXT Tag Team Champions, New Day, yeah that's right. Um, They basically say how there's only three Austins they respect. Austin Creed, the Austin of Stone Cold, and the city where Kofi lives, Austin, Texas. Uh, and Xavier Woods says he gets that Austin can rest, can waste, I'm sorry, Austin can waste time filling three hours of Raw, but right here on SmackDown is only two hours, and they get to biz down the business, which, that cracked me up for sure. They slide in the ring, and they doubt Theory will win the Rumble because they're going to win it, but when one of them win the Rumble, everyone wins the Rumble. Uh, and then, of course, Austin says they, can, they can't walk out here and interrupt him because he's the biggest star in the company. Out comes then The Miz, who then points out he's been competing in the Rumble before Theory would, would reach puberty. And Theory says that just makes him old. And The Miz says, nope, because I'm wiser and smarter than he'll ever, than the Theory ever be. And he's going to eliminate everybody else. Uh, to win the one thing he has in, in this industry, the Rumble. He is, of course, the first ever two-time Grand Slam champion, but he's not won a Rumble match yet. They laugh at him, but then Miz says there's nothing more dangerous than him with something on his shoulder. And he, he kind of forgot his line there, but basically um, a brawl broke out between the four of them. This is more so like that one segment where it's like they tease, like, oh, you know, this is how a Royal Rumble works. Uh, Bobby Lashley came out and just wrecked havoc on everybody. He got the promo on the mic saying that since Brock interrupted this title match on Raw, he's going to terrorize everyone in the Rumble match until he gets what he deserves. But then, of course, the crowd was popping big time as Brock Lesnar came out and jumped the rail, hit Ashley, not Ashley, Lashley with an F5, and he grabs the mic and says, I'll see you tomorrow at Rumble. So Brock Lesnar officially enters the Rumble as well. I was kind of hoping they would have left him as a surprise, but you know he's going to get in there, and him and Lashley are going to him and Lashley are going to take each other out somehow. Again, I cannot wait for them to have that match at WrestleMania 39. Again, give me a stipulation. Someone even suggested them doing Hell in a Cell, although I've still heard rumors they want to do. A rematch with Edge and Finn Balor inside Hell in a Cell, which that'd be good, but Brock and Lashley need to do some sort of, like, Hell in a Cell, Last Man Standing, No Holds Barred, like, some kind of stipulation. They, I'm hoping, have a WrestleMania Classic at Mania.
But I cannot wait for that match at Mania. Uh, we had Rhea Ripley also. She had already announced her entrance into the Rumble. And she basically just says, I'm going to win. Lacey Evans had a random ass match with, with a random jobber, Jasmine Alert. Who got a little bit of offense, but Lacey squashed her. And she won with Sergeant Slaughter's Cobra Clutch. She then cuts a promo telling the fans to shut up. and says the Cobra Clutch is unbreakable. And she's going to win the Rumble. And she demands a salute from the crowd from your soon-to-be Rumble winner. Yeah, next week she's going to probably be repackaged yet again. So... We'll see if they really commit to Lacey Evans long term with any of these gimmicks. Because she's changed gimmicks like, what, three times since she came back from her pregnancy last year. Whatever. Then we have an interview with um, the Banger Bros. Or, I'm sorry, they can't call them now. I guess they there's some uh, someone else called the Bang Bros, I guess. Uh, basically, they were saying how they think each other will win the Rumble. But first, they got to take care of uh, Hit Row tonight as there was the first of two semi-final matches for the number one contenders for the SmackDown tag titles. Um, but as they were entering for the match, they get attacked by the Viking Raiders. But it was weird because yes, they beat them down, but then they were able to leave on their own terms and basically, they just said, you know what? Nah, forget it. We're just going to back out of this match. And I'm like, why? Like, just, just to go after the Viking Raiders? Like, why are you... They were... They were determined to get another shot with the Usos. Yet, they get beaten up a little bit by, by the Viking Raiders. And they decide, nah, forget this. Like, uh, uh, that... I, I didn't like that. That was strange. But basically, Hit Row came out and were like, yeah, ring the bell, forfeit. But no, Adam Pearce said everybody's going to earn their way to the finals. So he said, we have a replacement team, which was Braun Strowman and Ricochet. And they beat Hit Row. So they're going to the finals, take on either Imperium or Legato Del Fantasma. Match was fine. I, I, I don't know, just the booking of this match was just weird. Again, why did Drew McIntyre and Sheamus like hype up wanting to get their hands on the Usos just to back out of it? I don't. I didn't understand that. So that happened there. Um, Kevin Owens was interviewed backstage saying he wants to become Universal Champion and right or wrong when he uh, got screwed over two years ago at the Rumble. And he knows he's fighting the same odds. But he's going to take out as many members of Bloodline as he can to even the odds. Which the Usos roll up and Adam Pearce holds them back from fighting with each other. Um, and then, okay. So then we have, we go back to the arena. And the lights go out. Now they didn't do the usual little, you know, little like intro thing they would play before the song would play. But we hear Bray Wyatt's old Eater of Worlds music and then we see someone on the stage and we think it's Bray Wyatt but instead it's LA Knight dressed up like Eater of Worlds Bray Wyatt with a Hawaiian shirt and the straw hat and he has like this tiny little like electric lantern it was it's like something you would buy from a dollar store I, I, one of the comments i think it was michael cole called it like the world's smallest lantern it was priceless i thought it was funny so he got in the ring and he says let me talk to you uh his appearance at raw 30 was the greatest moment in history of wwe and he gives us what we won even though we don't deserve it and like the turn in the in the punch bowl, here comes the Undertaker to assist Bray Wyatt. And why is that? Neither of them won at LA Knight one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah! When the Alamodome goes pitch black, Bray's dumpy ass ain't coming back. And that's a fact of life. Yeah! But then, of course, we get the um, the new like you know intro thing, and Bray Wyatt appears on the stage and says he sees LA Knight making jokes, but he knows he's not smiling inside, and he doesn't even matter anymore. Time for talking has come and gone. Tomorrow night, he finally gets to uh, meet the man he's been looking for. So take your time and have a great night, sweetheart. And then, um, but then Uncle Howdy appears in the skybox. Again, like, like I said in my predictions, 
I think Uncle Howdy is going to cost Bray Wyatt this pitch black match. And again, it'll have an excuse for for someone to stop Alexa Bliss from gaining full control in her role since she doesn't have full control in her Raw Women's title match. But we'll see how this pitch black match goes tomorrow night. Um, my favorite match tonight, again, by far, was definitely the number one contenders match, semifinals match between Imperium and Legado del Fantasma. And Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci taking on um, Joaquin Wild and Cruz del Toro of Legado del Fantasma. And this, again, was an excellent, fun, awesome, high-flying match. As I keep saying, too, like, again, I... When they were in NXT, I was always a fan of Santos Escobar. The rest of Legado del Fantasma were just, like, goons to me. But on the main roster, they've been having some excellent, excellent matches. Uh, and I could have believably seen them win this match. But Imperium does win. They're going on to the finals. And um, and they're going to be taking on Braun Strowman and Ricochet next week. I'm guessing they'll probably give Strowman and Ricochet the win and give them the tag title shot. Even though, again, it's just weird, but... Whatever. Um, we also have Zia Lee um, announcing her entrance into the Rumble. Charlotte Flair had some appearance on Ryan Satin's podcast. And Sonya Deville basically saying, where's my other title shot? And then Charlotte's just giving it to her again that next week. I really don't care for, the, for this feud between the two of them, but whatever. And the main event... Well, before this main event, earlier in the show... Uh, after the Usos got escorted out of the arena, Jay Uso was getting in the car and he made a call and he said, my dog, I need you to do me a favor. Cause commercial break. He obviously called Sami Zayn. Cause Kevin Owens took on Solo Sokoa in a good match, but then towards the end when uh, Kevin Owens had um, hit the sen- his uh, senton, he goes for the pinfall on Solo but then Sami Zayn pulls Solo out of the ring and appears. So, of course, um, that apparently caused a DQ, but I never heard the bell ring. But then, uh, of course, Owens and Solo brawl on the floor. And then Solo went to super kick Kevin, but Owens got out of the way and he super kicked Sammy instead. And then they brawled, I believe... Um, uh, Owens powerbomb Solo onto the table. And then, of course, uh, he then grabbed a steel chair and threatened uh, Sami Zayn with it. But he's saying, basically, this is what, what the bloodline's going to do to you. And he whacks Solo with the chair, knocking Solo into the crowd. And he just, like, tosses the chair to Sami and leaves it to him. And Owens tells Sami, I'll see you tomorrow night. And that's how the show went off the air. Yeah, not... Not as nowhere close to being as good as Raw 30 for sure, but it was all right. It was a solid show. I gave the B minus. The main event was good. Um, again, I'm wondering again if Roman Reigns, in fact, is going to be upset for Sammy showing up, even though, even though Jay Uso did make the call. Um, so again, we will see. And again, what on earth is this final test? I pitched my idea, of course, in my Rumble predictions, which kind of give me a little bit of flack because everyone's saying that I'm saying Sami Zayn should be the guy and not Cody Rhodes. I didn't say that. Like I said, I pitched the idea in a way that Cody Rhodes can still win the Rumble, but it can set up for Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns at Chamber in Montreal. But, but yeah, there was a few things again I didn't like. Again, I didn't like the booking of how Drew and Sheamus got written out of their match. Uh, again, I'm not a fan of all of this stuff with Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. I'm really not. Um, the match, again, with uh, Karrion Cross and Rey Mysterio was solid, but I thought it was strange how they had Cross, get, Cross take a pinfall loss. But, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But guys, again, this was just quick. Thank you for being here. Again, I gave this show a B minus. Next time you see me, of course, in the recording, you know, well, if unless I do live reactions tomorrow, but next time I do a review or whatnot, I will be in my new home. 
Uh, again, this, you know, this bedroom's definitely given me a lot of great memories over the years. But, of course, I bought a house. Getting married later this year. It's time to move on. So, look forward to you, to you continuing to do what I do here on YouTube. But instead, it'll be from my own home. Very, very soon. So, guys, again, B- minus for SmackDown uh, for this week. What were your guys' thoughts on this episode of SmackDown? Make sure you guys leave your thoughts again down in the comment section below. And be sure, as always, to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content on my channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Club of the Man 93 And as always, be sure, as always, just shout for Meatball Sub. Follow me on TikTok at the Club of the Man 1993 I'm tired, guys. I'm checking out. Catch you guys all soon. Enjoy the Rumble pay per view tomorrow, and I'll catch you guys whenever. Have a great rest of your night, guys, and peace out, everybody. Yeah, no, I will surprise. There's no